Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest wrestling podcast ever. I am your host, Adani, joined like every week with the greatest co-hosts ever, Manask and Bodacious. So last week we had our first uh, web show episode. And uh, we just plan on building on that today. And uh, so we had a great week in wrestling. And uh, we want to start off by going over uh, the matches in which uh, we had titles uh, on the line. So uh, it started with SmackDown. And we had a Styles vs. Gulak. And uh, Styles retained the Intercontinental title. Um uh, what do y'all What do y'all think about that little feud that was going on with that? I sadly didn't watch. <laughs> it sounded like it was really good from what I heard about it, but I don't know. You know, there's so much wrestling goes on each week. It's hard to invest that much time into WWE for me. Mm-hmm. So I have no say in the SmackDown. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't watch it. Sorry. <laughs> I, I Actually, it's a match that I'm going to go back and watch because I didn't even know that it happened. <laughs> I, did, I do have it recorded. I just haven't had time to watch it. Yeah, it was a good yeah, match. Yeah, it's, on my, it was a, it it's was a, on my Hulu. Gotcha. Yeah, it was a good match. Um, the Gulag Styles story does seem to end there, but uh, we'll see what, uh, what goes on with uh, you know Styles and Riddle going forward. And uh, obviously, uh, Daniel Bryan is still a part of that as well. So, um, next match that was a title match um, was, I think we go to uh, NXT from there. I don't think there was any matches on Raw that were for uh, for any titles. Uh, We did have, uh, on NXT, we did have just the one major title um, match and that was the champion versus champion yeah. North American yeah. champion versus the NXT heavyweight champion exactly yeah. <laughs> Keith Lee versus Adam Cole so what is y'all take what is y'all's take on that before we give away the you know tell tell everyone what happened it was good I enjoyed it I, I'm, a yeah, big, was, I'm a fan of Keith Lee. I like him. I love Adam Cole. It was about as good as I was expecting it to be mm-hmm. between the two. Yeah, I, I completely agree. What do you think? What do you think, Bodacious? It seemed like a big main event. Like it was a big deal. Mm-hmm. They treated it like a big deal, and I appreciated that as a fan. Mm-hmm. Going in, it felt like a big fight. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I was really excited for it going in, except for the fact that, like we said last week. Somebody got a little picture happy, but uh, uh, overall, even even with that, it was a, it was a great match. I think they wasted the moment though. I think they should have saved it for the next takeover. Well, I think but after yeah. Well, I think the thing about um, the thing about it is is they were they were trying to challenge Fighter Fest. Oh, I know. So you know they claimed they're not. <laughs> That mm, I believe they're running out of time with a certain somebody on his contract, and so I think they're going to push him to the main uh, the main roster. I think there's so. actually yeah. been conflict conflicting reports about that one. Like, you know, you had some people saying somebody's contract coming up. You had other reports saying he actually has 18 months left on his contract. So, mm. yeah. Eighteen months is enough to do something. See what he's about on the main roster. I just didn't bother looking into it because yeah. I can, you can never really trust the dirt sheets out there. That's, that's true. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it yeah. is always it's always rough trying to trying to uh, to to play by that uh, idea. But the just to give y'all an understanding, Keith Lee did win. Um, it was a great match. Um, it was about a 25 minute match, which is good that they gave them that much time. And um, and uh, if you haven't watched it, do go back and watch it. It is a, it is on what, Hulu or or in or uh, WWE Network. I can't remember. I got it on Hulu, but okay. Yeah, I have Hulu I was, Live. I'm a member of the Busted Open Nation. I listen to Busted Open on Sirius XM. <laughs> you know, I don't know if y'all ever heard of it. Dave Lagreca, Bully Ray. 
Mark Henry, Tommy Dreamer, awesome. Ryan McKinnell. They were discussing uh, about Adam Cole, of whether or not he gets moved to the main roster. And it's like the history of smaller guys that I can't move in the main roster is, just has not worked well. They were saying, they were discussing, it's probably better for him to stay on NXT, or in my opinion, lead to a different company. I hear you, but... Smaller guys like Gargano and Ciampa, the small amount of time they were actually there. <laughs> And then look what happened to Finn Balor when he was on the main roster. I mean, Daniel Bryan, only reason he even got the push because the crowd forced their hand in that. They were trying to push Batista that year. I feel like uh, Finn Balor is an anomaly because they tried to push him, but he got hurt. I feel like he would have been a success if he didn't get hurt. And uh, nobody else has had somebody, has tri- had Triple H come out and say the other day he said that Adam Cole made the title not the other way around mm-hmm. he doesn't say that about any, everybody matter of it's fact true. a lot of people he kind of has treated like a joke but well, good I, I question think, that, uh, I think they Ray see something up. in him can you right now imagine Adam Cole going face to face toe to toe with Brock Lesnar like like uh, Keith Lee did at the Royal Rumble mm. do you ever do you well, now, WWE now that's... ever giving the chance to put him in that position where he's like standing face to face with Brock Lesnar. Not right this second, no. At least in my yeah, eyes. Yeah, not not this second. And then also, uh, Randy Orton got beat by Brock Lesnar in minutes. So everybody's getting beat by Brock Lesnar in minutes. So what's the difference of Adam Cole so, versus anybody? <laughs> so in my eyes, the way you do that is you do it as a, a, a money in the bank cash in. You do it as a money in the bank cash in, and then then it, it it stimulates that idea that he can beat him. It does have that giant killer feel. And then the next match they have, the rematch, you, you're not going in expecting Adam Cole to lose. You think at least he has a chance. So I think that's... So you're saying the Seth Rollins formula. Exactly. Essentially. I, exactly. I mean, that's how... <laughs> I, I, yeah. Okay, now think of it this way. With the person that's in charge of the main roster, you know it's all the main roster... Uh, the person that's in charge of the main roster, if he had a choice between the four of Dominic Dijakovic, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, and Adam Cole, you think he would actually they would actually push Adam Cole over the other three, based on their history of preferring larger, bigger size. I, I hear you on all of that, but I'll raise you an undisputed era. But that's Maybe. NXT. That's that's what I mean. Like when you get to the main roster, like Raw and SmackDown, it's Triple H no longer has control of it, and the person that does doesn't tend to tends to gravitate to the bigger wrestlers rather than the smaller ones. So it's like just based on history, I kind of foresee them choosing going with those three over him. Oh yeah, Matt Riddle back. is definitely getting pushed to the moon. Yeah, especially with the reports of McMahon saying that he's the next Shawn Michaels. Like, uh, for, he's for sure getting skyrocketed I mean, to the moon. Am I? In my opinion, Adam Cole, Cole is closer to the next Shawn Michaels than Matt Riddle, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just saying what, whatever sure. yeah. McMahon has said. Yeah, yeah. That's but, what uh, had me worry uh, about if he stays. Like the fact that Vince McMahon's comparing Matt Riddle when Adam Cole is actually closer. It's not like and Vince McMahon does watch NXT. The fact that he knows and loves Keith Lee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But also, as far as Keith Lee, I'm excited that Kerry and Cross was looking on. You know, to the match, and they showed that. Like, I, I want to see where that's going to go because he's, he's kind of like psychological warfare kind of guy. So I want to see what he's going to do. You know, when they had Adam Cole on that SmackDown when he faced and defeated Daniel Bryan, I thought that was the beginning of something. Like, oh, are we going to actually get Adam Cole moved up and actually see big things for him? No. Well, I think <laughs> that if he does come up, it, he does need to be on SmackDown because I think that yes, I think that SmackDown is you know has made a name for itself with the smaller wrestlers and you know it, it's the kind of the opposite on raw and you know the raw is all about you know the bigger wrestler you know be the 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 you know the really face of the franchise where smackdown was always kind of at least since since the since the shift to you know to fox and and even but it, it seemed like they were small they were favoring the small-time wrestler over the big time. 
I'm sorry, I just saw that cup and it made me think of AEW. Yeah, I, I thought about that. Like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> All right, well, uh, speaking of AEW, uh, that's actually the next title matches. We had two title matches on Fighter Fest Part 2. Uh, the first title match was the tag titles, uh, Private Party versus Paige and Kenny Omega. What did y'all think about that match? That was It was a great match, but it wasn't the best tag match they had in the show. Oh, no. It, we'll, we'll, get it we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> I didn't like the. There's something weird about the timing of that finish. It, I don't know if it was the camera angle or what, but it just looked really weird. Uh, yeah. But I liked it. Yeah, I mean, it can't was a... say I'm a fan of Kenny Omega. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I'm in the minority on that because I like him in the ring. But there's just something about his personality that rubs me the wrong way. He's really, I don't know, something about him. But anyway, I really well, like that. I think that probably Adam what's rubbing you the wrong way about Kenny is. You know, he's a singles wrestler. He's not used to tag team wrestling. Well, I guess he kind of is, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe yeah, they're just I, playing I up this saying. animosity angle with Paige? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that leads to a one-on-one match oh. against... Uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and then you get a Jericho versus OC level feud and match out of the two of them. All right. The next, uh, the well, the uh, the last uh, title related uh, segment um, was uh, with Brian Cage with the FWT F- FTW title with Taz. What did y'all think okay. about that? <laughs> I liked it. I I thought it was a good idea. I've heard a lot of people were upset about that and turned a lot of people off, but. At the same time, it's like fifty-fifty about those who were excited about it, those who weren't. I didn't. I thought it was a good idea. I feel like it was two weeks too early. They could have capitalized on because I, I feel like Moxley's going to win mm-hmm. next week. So there's my prediction. Sorry if it's a little bit early, Adam. Or, uh, uh, <laughs> really, uh, sorry, tongue tied. Oh, Donnie, can't say it right. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I feel like uh, Moxley is going to win because you know we're ready for more Moxley violence. Been a little uh, light on that lately. Sure. <laughs> but I, I, I definitely feel like he could have uh, come off of a loss. Taz could have been presenting him with the title, and then he could have capitalized, and it would just moved him on from there. But now he's already got it, so then. But it all could be part of the story. Could we never know? Something could happen, and they might call that match off. <laughs> And push it back even further. I doubt it, but it's mm-hmm. possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like they right. have a uh, Cody versus um, uh, what's their name? I can't think of F- the name right now. That's why. Uh, Joey Joey Janela's partner. Um, oh, Sunny Kiss. Sunny Kiss. Yeah, Sunny Kiss versus uh, Cody next week for the uh, TV title. I almost called the U.S. title. <laughs> well, actually, oh, yes, let's speaking, get that too. <laughs> speaking of the U.S. title, I was a, say, uh, it's a, it wasn't a, a change of title, but it was a change of title. So basically, on Raw, uh, MVP and uh, Bobby Lashley revealed a brand new United States Championship. What are your thoughts on the new one against the old one? My question about that is, okay, why is it not the U.S. champion <laughs> debuting the new belt and putting the new belt on, yet the challenger is debuting the new belt and the challenger is putting the new belt on? Like, that didn't make any sense. I agree. <laughs> but I as agree. for the design, it's all right, I guess. I mean, yeah, the timing was weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agree. Really weird. But do y'all... And uh, I don't know that it's dramatic enough of a change to like why was it necessary um it's not bad it doesn't look awful uh i can get used to it so so my take is like why you why say? debut it now like why not debut it at the pay-per-view <laughs> well my take on it is that yeah. a lot of the other titles have a distinctive look and basically, like, the, the Intercontinental title doesn't look like any other title. Like, so, 
you're you basically you made the United States Championship essentially look exactly like the World Championship, essentially, and I just don't think that's a good idea. Like, I don't like I don't hate the way it looks. I think it looks beautiful, but I think the idea of changing it to that was not a good idea. So, that's just my opinion. Um, so keeping on the title match theme uh, we do have at least one title match um, coming up in the following week of uh, you know of wrestling uh, starting on Smackdown uh, we are getting a tag team title match with the New Day versus Shinsuke and Cesaro what do y'all take what are your takes on that WWE screwed up Shinsuke Nakamura. That's all I had to say about that. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing with Cesaro, too. Like, <laughs> so much wasted potential. Yeah, oh, I mean... Yeah. That's all I had to say. <laughs> Alright. Well, but, I, I mean, the New Day is great. I love the New Day. <laughs> My kids love the New Day. They're fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, but think... also wasted potential because I feel like Big E should have had a world title by now. I, that's I mean, fair. I think... should have had the title. Cesaro should have had the title. Big E should have had the title. <laughs> uh, I I I stand by that Big E for sure. I mean, Shinsuke, Shinsuke, and you know the, the is great. Everything but... that Keith Lee is like, Big E is like he did it first. Keith, they're saying, yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, it just, I like it's it's kind of unfair, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. But uh, uh, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah, it is what it is. All right, so let's. Uh, that was all the championship news that I uh, at least can come up with for right now. So let's move on to the next subject and let's just discuss uh, our favorite matches of the week. What do you use your favorite match of the week, Minosk? I had two actually. I had the Jericho versus Orange Cassidy and the eight man tag match of FTR, Young Bucks versus Butcher, Blade, and uh, Lucha Brothers. Mm hmm. I, I definitely agree with you on. Uh, I say my, I, one of those is my favorite match of the week, also. So go ahead and you know tell us why you like to love you. You love those matches this week. Um. The Jericho Orange Cassidy had, had a great build up. I was already looking forward to that, and I think that match helped take Orange Cassidy to that next level of a main eventer. Yeah. And you know, one of my favorite wrestlers is Jericho. He's in the match, so mm -hmm. when Jericho wrestles, you know he's gonna give it his all. Yep, for sure. What, what about you, buddy? And then the oh, eight man ahead. tag. That's probably the best eight man tag match I've ever seen. <laughs> oh yeah. That yeah, lots of lots of people are raving about that eight man tag. It was phenomenal. I could not take my eyes off the screen. Uh, what about you, Bodacious? What's your what's your favorite match or matches of the week that you want to discuss this this week? Uh, I completely agree with everything that Manos just said. <laughs> uh, I just want to add that when I first saw Orange Cassidy, I thought it was a joke. I was mad. Uh, but then the more that I saw. And the more that I learned, I found out that he's essentially doing one inch like death punch technique with these kicks and punches and it's violent. And I cannot believe that people are walking after he hits him with these things. <laughs> uh, I saw his match at Revolution with Pac and I was like, wow, OK, so he's serious. So I, I came in fully expecting an awesome match and, I, and they delivered. Uh, and then the. I'm looking forward to next week based on that eight man tag because they just announced FTR versus Lucha Bros next week. And that's, mm -hmm. that's going to yeah, be that's... an amazing match. That's going to be like yeah. DIY FTR like quality match there. Uh, uh, probably better because I think Lucha Brothers, you know, might be a little better than DIY was back then, but different style, whatever. I think that they're, they're going to blend well. Uh, but I'm also loving this slow build. FTR versus Young Bucks, like eventually down the line, like yeah, I'm glad they're not rushing to that. They don't. They don't need to. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That doesn't even need to be for the title. That's what I was thinking. 
you know, maybe it would be a good idea if um, Paige and Omega had dropped the titles to Private Party, have uh, Young Bucks face off against FTR for like a number one contendership at a pay-per-view rather than for the title. But title would make it that much better as well. Mm-hmm. It's being a, a you know more of an AEW newbie, I, the Young Bucks are just phenomenal. I just I can't say enough about like just you know it's just you know I, back back in the day when you know Matt and Jeff used to you know used to tag you know in their prime you know it was poetry in motion and that's exactly what I see in the same in in the Young Bucks like it's just it's perfect tag team wrestling. I love it. Just like uh, you know I go back you know. Matt and Jeff were always my favorite uh, back in the day, and and it's the tag team wrestling I really hold, you know, close to my heart. And it just, it just, you know, I said it last week, and I'll say it again. You know, AEW's tag team matches are just top notch, hands down. Like I just, I think that they they excel there, where you know, well far and beyond what WWE does. I've heard rumors they're going to be having a trios division. That could be interesting for sure. And actually, on Twitter earlier today, someone, was it today or yesterday, someone had men- uh, mentioned they would love to see uh, AEW to introduce a women's tag belt and make Brandy and um, Allie the first champions. And Brandy actually liked and reposted it <laughs> with like the little like eye emoji, like looking side to side. So. It could be possible. <laughs> Who do you think? Uh, uh, God, what is her name? Uh, she was on AEW. She had that the the uh, tag mat or the the handicap match. She's talking about getting a uh, Nyla manager. Rose. Nyla yeah, Rose. Nyla Rose. That's her name. Who do you think she's going to get as a manager? Because I was thinking Brandy, uh, you know, Brandy Rhodes. You know, I had no clue at first, but again. Listen to Busted Open this morning. They were actually discussing that one, that very same topic. And one name they did put out there was um, Awesome Kong. Because when she did interviews before, she had Awesome Kong with her. And, you know, who better to represent her than Awesome Kong? Yeah. It should be about time for Awesome Kong to return. So that's what I'm putting out there. All right, we're gonna say uh, change change directions a little bit. Um, I want to get y'all's take on the possible, you know, the, the Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles uh, because I think that feud is gonna be heading in a pretty uh, great direction. What is what is y'all takes? What is y'all's take on that? Okay, I'll be honest. I have not watched SmackDown in a while, so I, you know, they're feuding. Like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you don't have to know what's going on to, to get your take on the idea of it happening. No, I'm saying that, that sounds like a cool idea. I mean, I can see that. I mean, I saw their, um, when Matt Riddle debuted and his match with against AJ Styles was pretty good. Mm-hmm. So I, it would be cool if they escalate and do a cage match eventually, maybe at SummerSlam. Yeah, that sounds good. I feel like Matt Riddle reminds me a lot of like Kurt Angle, Rob Van Dam, and some other people just mashed together. <laughs> and AJ Styles has had good matches with all those people. <laughs> I mean, does AJ so... Styles have bad matches? I'm just curious. Like, I think he could probably have a good match like with a broom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, to you know, AJ Styles. You know, since ever, you know, going back to obviously TNA, he's just he's always he's always top notch when it comes to putting on matches. So, I, I think that any any feud that he has, um, you know, is, he'll, he'll he'll make a great showing regardless of who it's against. So, um. no, actually, I had a WWE question for y'all. What's y'all's opinion about the uh, Rey Mysterio Seth Rollins? Eye for an eye match. <laughs> yeah, I was actually gonna bring that up. That perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go first, Bodacious? Well, the only reason I was asking it made me think about that because you asked, uh, "What was the last bad match AJ Styles had?" And I remember I was actually in person at that Royal Rumble in San Antonio 
when he had that five star match against uh, John Cena. And now I'm thinking, what other match did I see live? Oh, yes. I saw uh, AEW's Eye for an Eye match. <laughs> and then, oh, Rey Mysterio versus Seth Rollins. <laughs> well, we're still good, right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It just told me we timed out. No, I didn't get Still here. Yeah, still here. Um, Rocking and rolling. So I would say that I was a little confused why they reinserted Kevin Owens last week. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, uh, what's in that cup? No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm not giving away free advertisement, so I, I'm not going to say. <laughs> but uh, Owens, I don't like the fact that it's fresh, freshly squeezed. <laughs> Oh, it's definitely fresh to squeeze. <laughs> uh, I just didn't like the fact that, you know, the whole theme of Extreme Rules is Extreme Rules horror show. And they were making a big deal about the right eyeball has to be ripped out of the socket. And like I said, after seeing Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy and him actually pulling the gauge out of his ear, I'm like, I could see... WWE taking that next step is something disgusting and trying to fit with the theme of horror shows. Like, I personally don't want to see something that nasty, even if it is fake. If they do do that match, it better be a cinematic match. <laughs> Definitely. Well, well, they also, it was it was Rey Mysterio that said he was going to rip uh, Seth Rollins' eye out. So, you know, that's right. obviously, you know, could be taken to the extreme. And I don't, I don't think, I don't know that they'll go that far because. The idea that Seth Rollins would have to wear a, a, an eye patch for the rest of his career, so to speak, I, I think that's a little bit of well, a... Well, I mean, well, you know, it's wrestling. It'll probably be like a year and a half or something. <laughs> no, nah, they'll do it. He'll, like, like, he'll play it out for a while. <laughs> like a month. The, he'll wear a, I mean, uh, maybe he'll wear a different Mox, le- colored eye contact, his different colored contact lens. Say I got an eye Mox transplant. Moxley already did it, like I said. Because uh, you remember AEW did it with Moxley, and Moxley actually... Wore that eye patch for several months. I was just trying to think, how long did Kane go talking on a voice box? <laughs> Wasn't long. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention, do you really see Seth Rollins losing that match? I kind of think he's end up winning it. You yeah. know, because they... I mean, I saw on WrestleZone.com, your wrestling news website, <laughs> that uh, Ray Mysterio is wrestling without a contract currently. Mm-hmm. So... Could be that's their way of writing him out. Yeah, I mean that made, that would make the and most writing sense. I mean, Dominic in. Yeah, yeah, that would make the most sense in my eyes. I mean, yeah, the quote I heard earlier was from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Seth Rollins. To be honest, Seth Rollins. I'm sorry, Donnie. Kind of, <laughs> it's all good. I was gonna say, uh, Seth Rollins does real does need a win though, because um, so I can definitely see. Um, See him win because he did lose. He did lose at WrestleMania, and he he hasn't won a lot of live uh, a lot of matches on TV these past couple of days weeks. So um, I do think that uh, that he definitely needs to get this uh, this rub, so to speak, just to make sure that he stays. You know, he stays. You know, more relevant until so he doesn't drift off into the you know always losing category. Um, mm, I don't know about that. I, th- I feel like he's been giving the rub to other guys because he's I, he's a made guy. There's no way Seth Rollins is going to fall off the map. I no way, no how. Main of won the main event of WrestleMania multiple times. Well, uh, yeah, but I, I feel you. He does. He he does need. With, a win, but I don't know that he really like needs to win. Well, with him, you know if, what I mean? if he was still a face, I would I would say that. But since he's a heel right now, for him to stay, you know, relevant as a heel, he he's got to win a match at some point. No, not necessarily. As long as he's going up against faces, he can lose every time. He's that cause like he said, he's already a made man, so everyone knows how great he is. And when you get to that level as a heel, you can lose and not hurt you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, losing might help him because Indy has got something to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like if you want to make a face, the best way to make a face is for them to constantly lose as well. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, heck, I can't remember the last time the Miz won a big match, but 
he can talk himself into like a world championship match next week and i'd be like yeah he's 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 the guy well he was just the they were just the tag team champions not like a couple months ago so that's uh i'm waiting for the um, wwe's biggest heel today baron corbin to finally get a title shot <laughs> i uh we're, hey, we're coming up he's the wwe's mjf man you're right he's, he's definitely uh, I do want to. Uh, we're running out of time, so I do want to hit on one more thing real quick, and I want to get y'all's opinion. Um, the opening segment for Raw. Did y'all watch that? Yes. The Drew McIntyre versus Heath Slater. Yeah. I want to get y'all's yeah. take on what y'all think about Heath Slater in that. Do you think that you know it was kind of you know what direction do you, do you think that was a good direction? Yeah. I hope that he's <laughs> still got a job because <laughs> i've heard I, that I there's other companies I, I that won't hire him I, still, I think he'd be better outside there i think he should go no i I, I agree with you but oh impact okay but i've heard other the other company won't hire him yeah which but, uh, i think there's been sucks. a lot of rumors that uh impact was gunning for him because rhino has even dropped hints about a tag partner who has kids <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's got kids. Yeah. Apparently two, not twenty two, but probably. Yeah. <laughs> and he did he look more jacked when he, on Monday than he normally did? He definitely looked like he put on some weight for sure, so I can't couldn't tell if it was actual muscle or but he's def, he was definitely bigger. No, it looked like muscle. It was like yeah. good lord, he must have got he It made me wonder where Jinder Mahal is, right? Jinder Mahal and <laughs> yeah, he ate him. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's going to bring us to our final segment uh the kudos the stars who you who are you giving your star of the week to let's start with monosk star of the week i'm going to give the star of the week to ftr because i think they're the ones who help make that eight-man tag match as great as it was their involvement All right, what about you, Bodacious? The- oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. I'll go for it. Okay. What? Bod- Bodacious, you're up. <laughs> can I split the trophy in half? Yeah, you can You can give s- stars of the okay. week. Then I'm going with uh, Keith Lee okay. and Orange Cassidy I mean, as that, a split. That makes sense. I mean, the, the, the two, be- two best matches of the week, I think, is, you know... It, for for the sake of storytelling was were definitely those absolutely um my star of the week will go to uh Manosk's tag team partners the, the young bucks because uh i definitely think where he thinks ftr was was the star i think the young bucks were the stars and uh they you know again i can't say enough about that tag match and you know even the even around all around the internet everyone's saying the same thing that was that was you know orange cassidy and uh and chris jericho was was a great match but but in my eyes fighter fest was made by that eight-man tag match like it just it was absolute fire and if you haven't watched it go watch it without question that was a great match but all of those people you already knew they were going to put on the quality if you've seen them before. To me, Orange Cassidy is now a guy that you can perceive as, like Manos said earlier, a main eventer. He's the guy, or he can be the guy, you know? Uh, So I feel like that's why I had to throw him in there. And then I've already been a fan of Keith Lee and uh, for a while, but I just felt like them giving him as the first double champion on... Uh, NXT, that's a big deal, uh, and then they made a really big deal out of that match, uh, and and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, so I I actually I, it was like a, almost a four way tie of Keith Lee, Orange Cassidy, FTR. I was gonna let you finish. I just I had something else to say. No, go ahead. I couldn't remember uh, who uh, the fourth person was. Young Bucks. I was. <laughs> uh, I've been following the Young Bucks since they were Generation Me and mm-hmm. TNA, and then they went over to New Japan. So, like, 
I've gotten a taste of their flavor for a while, and I'm really excited for the way that they're going. But like, uh, yeah, they're they're definitely great talent. But I, I've seen it before. Uh, but I like the new the new sauce that they're throwing in there with FTR and Butcher and Blade is even a pretty good team. Uh, I like that there's distinct teams over there, and the heels come out of the left, and the good guys come out of the right, and it's pretty. Cool. Wait till you see the cleaner Kenny Omega you think you like Young Bucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah if he goes there they're, they've like been hitting out their uh, being the elite like YouTube show that he's bringing back the cleaner yeah, yeah. they've been hitting out that for a while now though. <laughs> yeah it's gonna happen I'm not, I, I'm not a fan of this particular personality of his it's gonna happen <laughs> it has to be the and, right opponent. That's why I think it's probably building to be Hangman P Adam Page versus the Cleaner. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the implosion of the Elite, with Adam Page being the one that gets the the skyrocket. The only thing uh, uh, they can't do that until crowds are back. Yeah, this is true. Uh, Adani, did you happen to do that homework on Matt Hardy? I tried. I didn't. I didn't get around to it, unfortunately. I feel yeah, like this is going to end up being the uh, Matt Damon joke with uh, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, every week oh, we're sorry, telling Adani. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make, Maybe uh, next week for Matt Hardy. I'm going to make another. I'm going to make another note here. Even though did I, you watch the other match, the Stadium Stampede? No, that's okay. That's that's what it was. Stadium Stampede. All right. All right. And, uh, okay. It's fantastic. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Right. You've had to have seen the memes. <laughs> I don't think I have. Really? Oh, I don't want to ruin it for you, but yeah. uh, it's fantastic. All right. It's, that's, that started an ongoing joke of for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, a, just as a quick note, we do have uh, the TNA World... Not TNA... AEW World Heavyweight Championship match coming up this week, um, uh, next Wednesday at uh, fight uh, fall, fight of fight for, fight the, for fallen. the fallen. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, how do y'all and uh, y'all y'all think that's uh, that is that is that a, was that a cage match or or is it just no? A, okay. I think it's against okay. Brian Cage. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, I technically could, it is a cage. Thing. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if it happens. If it so happens, I'm so. I find it weird that they're still going to have a title match and you haven't heard a peep from the champion. That's why I'm thinking maybe they introduced that title for a reason. Maybe he's going to be a no show. <laughs> do we have a maybe? Do we have a women's championship match at NXT also? Is that coming up? Not next week. Not next week. Okay. All right. And what is oh the, on is NXT? NXT? Yeah. Uh. Oh. Isn't it uh, Tegan Knox versus uh, Io Shirai? Io Shirai. Is that yeah, yeah? Is that next that, week or the week after? I, th I thought it was next week, but probably next week. I mean, they got to put something heavy on against AEW's fight for the fallen. But, but uh, that... I guess they gave up on doing their takeovers. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've reached our time limit. Does anybody have any closing? Uh, remarks that they'd like to uh, say before we close out the podcast. Wear a face mask because <laughs> it keeps you safe. Um, <laughs> next week, I want you to think about this one. You know, I can get out of your top, your Mount Rushmore, your top four favorite wrestlers of all time. All right, top four favorite four? wrestlers. Four? Yeah. Not five? Do you want five? Uh, Everybody's been talking about the yeah. Mount Rushmore. That's why I said four, but yeah, you can do five. Okay. Your top five favorite wrestlers of all time. I think Rushmore was originally supposed to be five anyway, but then they got lazy or out of, under budget or something. <laughs> do five. Right. I feel like this show's got a big enough budget to do five. <laughs> back, like, popular, but back by popular demand. All right, so five favorite wrestlers. Also, make sure that y'all, uh, you viewers... Put y'all's top five wrestlers in the comments, and we can uh, we will try and read some on the show next week. So this is the end of the greatest wrestling podcast ever. 
I want to thank my greatest co-hosts, Manask and Bodacious, for being here once again. Every Thursday night, we will post a video. Please subscribe if you haven't, so that way you know when our videos go live. Thank you all for watching, and this is Adani signing out. Y'all gonna sign out? Later. Foundations. <laughs> <laughs>